joy to be with you again today and even in these very, very different times that we live in right now, the Church of Jesus Christ is so very much alive and it's a great joy for me to be back in Numa and to honor Corey and Simone as the pastors and leaders here, the apostolic work that they're doing for our city, for our nation and for the world. Uh, I, I consider it a great privilege to be their friend and to be part of what they're doing. Certainly, the support from this church to Margaret and I and to our team and our ministry has been extraordinary. So we just want to say thank you for that. It's an exciting day. A lot of people are dreading this day. But there are opportunities in this day to show forth the love of Jesus Christ as never before. So as we lean into the Word this morning... I want to, first of all, test perhaps to know that the way I prepare to come to a church like this is not with a particular message in mind. I come with a blank sheet of paper, and then I say, Father, what would you like me to say? And I, I just wait in worship, having a wonderful time with my Father until he says something. And the three, he gave me three phases this morning that I, I knew were heavy on his heart for me to bring. And the first one of those was become a life-giving well for the thirsty. Become a life-giving well for the thirsty. And the second uh, phrase, and I've, I, at the time that he gave me these phrases, I thought, well, they're all just separate things. But you'll see as we continue this morning that they are, in fact, connected. But the second phrase was persevere. Persevere to bring about the breakthrough. And the third phrase was this one. Love never fails. Love never fails. Now that's quite a statement. Let's go to John chapter 7 and we'll take a look there at verses 38 and 39 together. It's great to be with you. Turn to the one beside you in that lounge or wherever you are right now. Give them a big smile and say, Jesus still reigns. Okay, John chapter 7. He who believes in me, this is Jesus speaking, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. At this he spoke concerning the Spirit upon those who would come upon those believing in him. And uh, the Holy Spirit had not yet been given at that point, it says. But when the Holy Spirit was given, Jesus promised that there would be a river flowing out of their heart and it would be the person of the Holy Spirit. So I want you to get a hold of this because right throughout Scripture, the Holy Spirit or the power of God or the manifestation of God uh, is known as a river. In Ezekiel 47, we have the river of God flowing out of his presence to bring life and healing and blessing wherever he goes. And so the miraculous work of the Holy Spirit is likened unto a river that's flowing out of the heart of the believer and the church collective. And so I want you to know that this is flowing. Jesus said this would flow out of his, our heart. And so a spring uh, is often the source of a river. We know that rivers can be sourced in glaciers and mountains, all sorts of things, but many of them are actually sourced out of these great lakes. But what source is the lake? What source is the lake is a spring that bubbles up from deep in the ground where the reservoirs of collected water have been there maybe for centuries, and the spring just bursts forth through to the surface and forms this great lake, and then the lake overflows and it becomes a river. You'll see the relevance of all of that in a moment because it says the Holy Spirit of God, the miraculous force of God, is to become like a river flowing out of the heart of the believer and the collective church. And so this is a very powerful thing because it says here, your heart, your DNA, who you really are, individually and collectively is a spring from out of whom the Holy Spirit 
is to bring transformation to other people and to society at large. When you think about that, think about script, the scripture, Proverbs 4, 23, which has already been quoted this morning by Pastor uh, Corey in his opening remarks. I think we're prophetically in, in sync this morning. So Proverbs 4, 23, keep your hearts. Keep your hearts, your core essence, your, your essential DNA, your, your primary calling, your, the essence of who authentically you really are. When it says keep your heart, it's talking about who you really are within. And it says keep your heart, that reality, keep it with all diligence for out of it, your heart, your heart, your DNA authentically who you really are out of it shall flow every issue of life my friends i want you to get a hold of this methods may change programs may change seasons most certainly will change circumstances will change personnel will change but in all of that make sure of one thing don't let your heart change. Keep your heart. In the midst of all the other things that are changing, keep your heart. Don't allow anything to rob you of your heart. Speaking of your DNA, speaking of your primary calling, speaking of who you really, really are, your uniqueness, your God-given grace, do not let that go. Everything else may change, but keep your heart. Keep the authentic nature of who God has called you to be. Why? Because out of that shall flow rivers of living water that will bring transformation to this nation. And now I'm going to be speaking on Wednesday morning to the leaders and the staff, and, and I'm going to be amplifying that. I'm going to be talking about numerous of church becoming a life springing well. Um, but this morning, now for time's sake, I want to go to the second prophetic phrase that God gave me. And you'll see how it's all connected in a moment. Persevere. The second thing he said to me, clear as anything, was persevere until you get the breakthrough. Push through, prevail, relentlessly persevere until you get the breakthrough. And I want to say to you this, that if you do persevere, you will get the breakthrough. But there's a big button there. But there is a miracle substance. There is a supernatural weapon that you must actually possess in order for that effectiveness to be, uh, sorry, that perseverance to be effective. If your perseverance is going to bring a breakthrough, there's got to be a miracle substance. Now, I'm just playing with you a little bit, but I want you to imagine, turn the brain on and just get imagination there going, and just imagine that there was a vaccine uh, how relevant is this? How, a vaccine that would actually cure every illness, not just COVID, but every illness, every negative condition. Uh, uh, one vaccine that could never, never fail. Just imagine that. Just imagine if you were in a war and there was a battle plan and that battle plan would succeed no matter where the army was, no matter the conditions, no matter the weather, no matter how big the opposition was, there was a certain battle plan that could just simply never fail. Just imagine that. Just imagine a, a counseling technique that couldn't fail. Just imagine that. The reconciliation of every relationship, the healing of every memory, uh, uh, just regardless of the horror that birthed that condition, there was, there was something that could bring healing to every broken relationship. It just couldn't fail. Just imagine that. Just imagine the, the, the worst possible thing in your life right now in relation to another human being, the most irreconcilable state existing in your family at this moment. Just imagine that if there was something that could not fail. Just imagine 
if you were actually carrying it around inside of you, that it was already in you, that you, there was a gift from God, it was part of your DNA, and, and somehow this gift could not fail. Friends, I'm not making a, a mystical statement here. I'm not trying to lead you up a gum tree. I'm not giving you some false promise that would be cruel. What I am saying is here this morning quite clearly, my God cannot lie. He cannot lie. And his word has made one little statement that tells you this morning that everything I've just said is possible. Why? Because actually there is something that can never fail. And we find it in 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 8. 1 Corinthians 13, 8 says very, very clearly, love never fails. Love never fails. Now, friends, the key to breakthrough, that which will give 100% without qualification guarantee it can never be defeated, is this supernatural power of transformational life called love. Now, my friends, whatever that is, and here's the trick, but whatever that is, the Bible is clear and it cannot lie, love never fails. Now, that's an unqualified statement from a God that cannot lie. And I looked it up, and you know, it's, Amazingly, that word never actually means never. It actually means never. It means never in relation to time and never in relation to consequence or circumstance. It's impossible for this thing called love, whatever it is, to actually fail. So when, if you're like me, and someone makes a statement like that, I guarantee you there are those watching right now who will be able to think up a myriad of circumstances and people that would seem to totally contradict the statement I've just made. Uh, and you'll say, oh, are you kidding? I can tell you it can fail. Listen to this story. Listen to that story. I know what happened. Listen to this story. And I want to suggest to you this, that if love has seemed to fail, then it's because we have not understood one of two things or both things. One, God's intention. God's intention for that person. God's intention for that circumstance. God's intention for you as an individual. Maybe we just have not understood what God is actually doing, his intention for that situation. Or number two, perhaps we have not understood this thing called love. Okay, so I, I want to bring some light to that. First of all, I want to bring a little light to God's intention. You see, what we often forget is that whenever God is doing something, whenever we find ourselves in a situation as a born-again believer, God will always have, my Father will always have, Two twin objectives, two different objectives, as it were. And the first one is what God is doing through us. The second, what God is doing in us. And my friends, listen to me. God does some powerful things through us, amazing things through us. And, and we see people's lives touched and healed and changed. And, and we see miracles of finance taking place. And we, we, we know the transformation by his sheer grace that can take place through your life. And so God does powerful things through you. But I want you to also know that God is doing something in you. And when God does something in you, what you do, some, sometimes we all just lose sight of the fact that when God does something wonderful inside of us, it is a declaration to the entire cosmos. The Bible actually says there's a multitude of heavenly witnesses watching on. Every angel, every demon is watching how we react to life, our conversations and who we are. And when we respond with selfless, sacrificial love in that given environment, what it is doing is declaring to the entire cosmos that true sons and daughters in the image of our Father, in the image 
image of Jesus actually can exist that the cross was not in vain, that, that it, when Jesus cried out, it is finished, it was a triumphant declaration that humanity and sins hold upon a human being was broken forever, and that Jesus could come alive inside the human heart. You see, my friends, every time, every day of your life, you are declaring something. You are showing forth something. The, the Bible is quite clear that there is a multitude of witnesses that are looking on right now. And I realize something. I realize that regardless of what is happening through me, something is always happening in me. And so... What is God's objective? Is it the other person? Often it is. Get me right. Often it is. God is wanting you to transform the life of that individual or transform that city or transform that environment. Yeah, absolutely. Often, often it is what God is doing through you. But I am here to tell you as well that it's most often what God is doing in you. How many times have you heard this statement? I hear what you're saying, but <laughs> I tried it, and it didn't work. I, I mean, I loved them, and it simply did not work. Nothing actually changed. I loved them, and I loved them, and I loved them, but nothing ever changed. I want to suggest to you that that's an impossibility because, let me get to you, because either they did change and you didn't see it, or if they did not change and they have not changed and there's no evidence of change, I can tell you one thing of a certainty, you have changed. In that process, in that dialogue, in that relationship, in that environment, something changed inside of you. You have changed change. Now you can also come back to me and say, well, I've got news for you, fella. Uh, it ain't for the better because uh, I, I, I have n I am not more Jesus-like because of this. I can tell you that. Well, if that's the truth, my friend, then to be blunt, to be kind and loving, let me tell you something. Then what was operating in that moment was not Biblical selfless love. Because if biblical selfless love was operating in that moment, then you would have been changed towards the image of Jesus. And so his objective in you and his objective th through you. Um, I want to now move on to my third phrase. Well, I'm on it already. Love never fails, and I want to now tell you what that love is, because a lot of people misunderstand love. They say, I did love them. I loved them for years. I loved them. I loved them. I loved them. But did we understand the nature of love? Let's go to 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 to 8, and there we have very, very clearly what really love is. Verse 4. Okay, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4. Love suffers wrong and is kind. Love does not envy. Wow. Love does not parade itself. Love is not puffed up or proud. Love does not behave rudely. Love never seeks its own or its own agenda or its own purpose or, or, or getting my own rights. No, love never seeks its own. It's not provoked. It never thinks any evil. Verse 6, love does not rejoice in iniquity, but it always rejoices in the truth. Verse 7, love bears all things, believes for or has faith for all things. Hopes, all things, endures, all things. And that word endures is the word persevere. It perseveres through all things. Now, friends, when I read that scripture a few days ago, I thought I knew it well. 
that as I was reading it in order to come here, I suddenly saw something. These two phrases, one straight after the other, leapt off the page. Love perseveres through all things. Love never fails. Oh, the simplicity of it, I suddenly realized, why is it that love cannot ever fail? Because it never quits. Because it just keeps on persevering. Because it has no limits. Because, my friends, no matter what happens, love will not ever have a used by date. And there's simply nothing that you can go through that will stop that loving taking place. Um, Don't you love iPads, by the way? I'm just going to relax and have a fun here. For 52 years, I've preached off notes, paper, and it's never let me down once. And then they said, you've got to come into the 21st century, David. You really must. All my team told me, you've got to get the iPad. So I did, and now it skips all over the place. (laughs) Makes me very reliant upon the Holy Ghost, I can tell you. So... You say, well, it says it cannot fail because it has no limits. And you say, well, it did fail. I'm telling you it failed. Well, my friends, listen to me. The very process, this came as a real revelation to me personally, the very process of loving the unlovable without any tangible results whatsoever is in itself a triumph of love. Because it's a triumph in you. God has achieved his objective. He has succeeded. Why? Because a mortal human being like you just keeps on loving when it's not possible to love. That tells the entire cosmos that God has done a miracle on the inside of you. Father is lifting you up as a declaration of the new birth, the nature of Jesus in humanity, the evidence that a real son and a real daughter with his DNA is alive on planet Earth. I'm telling my friends, don't underestimate it. You may not see it with your natural eye, but it's happening in the spirit world. Trumpets sound, angels do an Irish jig. Why? Because a true son, a true daughter is is demonstrating the love of Jesus in a situation when it's not humanly possible. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10. It says, now to the intent that the manifold wisdom or nature of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in spiritual places. So I'm here to say to you, all of you watching this right now, no matter what the extremity is, no matter what the dire situation or the twistedness of the other individual, no matter what it is, There is a love that perseveres relentlessly and without a use by date. And it cannot fail in suffering long, in kindness, in denying all envy. Think about it, in never thinking evil, in only ever thinking good, in always rejoicing in the truth. Look at it, what it says, in bearing every hardship, in having faith for all things, in hope against all hope, and enduring without limit the perseverance of that kind of selfless, supernatural, Holy Ghost-given love cannot fail. It either achieves the transformation of the environment or the person, which often, often it really does, and we have loads of testimonies to that effect, or it achieves something in you that is truly eternal. 
God knows who he's called you to be a year from now and five years from now and ten years from now. He knows the kind of spiritual authority and anointing and power that he wants to bring upon your life and he wants to demonstrate through you in the decades to come. But he has to prepare a vessel of such purity and such simplicity that he knows he can trust his power and his authority because this vessel, this vessel can't be corrupted. This vessel won't become twisted. Why? Because they're able to exercise the love of God regardless of what the situation is. My friends, when God finds a heart that is possessed with unrelenting sacrificial love, he knows there's no limit to what he can do in and through that human being. My friends, persevere. That's my word to you. Persevere, persevere, persevere. Oh, yes, persevere in prayer. You're yeah, absolutely essential. Persevere in the word, persevere in hope, persevere in praise. Absolutely essential. But never, never, never stop also persevering in sacrificial acts of kindness, in forgiveness, in unrestrained generosity, in purity of heart and motivation and response in love and long-suffering. Oh, my friends, persevere. Go again. I tell you, go again. Oh, but you don't know what I face. Go again. Go again. Because love just simply cannot fail when it's the love that bubbles up from the Holy Spirit within you and becomes a river of transformational life that's flowing out of you. And I, I can't wait till Wednesday morning when I'm going to talk to numerous of church about the being a well of life-giving water. But I want every one of you right now to understand that you, 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 as you're watching right now, you are the church. You're the church. And as you uh, hear what I'm saying this morning, as you surrender yourself to be a vessel of unrelenting love, you are unlocking the springs, the wells of the Holy Ghost from within you that will flow out of you like a river of transformation. You know, in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 17 to 19, Paul brings the demonstration of love from the individual to the corporate. Verse 17, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts, plural, through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power. Friends, the verses were put in by somebody else. The Holy Ghost just made this as a blunt statement that if you be rooted and established in love, you will have power. Together, there is something about people whose motivation is selfless, sacrificial love. When they get together, there is power. And it doesn't have to be 600 people in, in an auditorium. It can be two people in a room. But if the love of God is operating, there's a power that's beyond the natural. Verse 19, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, to know it, to experience it, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Oh, what a statement. So what does it take for Christ to be fully seen in you with all of who he really, really is? As an individual and as a church collective, what does that mean? Does it mean you read the Bible more? Yeah, probably. Uh, and praying? Yes, absolutely. Uh, fellowshipping? Absolutely. All of the above. But I also tell you this morning that it means something infinitely more as well. It means that your love is an unconquerable force. It means that there's something flowing out of you that no man can ever argue against. There's something flowing out of your life that when your COVID thing is gone and you're back to work, you'll be touching every person in the room without saying a word. Why? Because there's a river of life that's flowing out of you. And no matter the despair that you face in a person or the hopelessness of a situation 
or the dire straits of a financial condition. It doesn't matter because when you walk in that room, there's a river of life inside of you, motivated by selfless love, no agenda, no personal gain, nothing but the love of God for the people and for the environment. And when you are motivated that way, there's a river of transformation that comes out of you. Things must change if the love of God is flowing out of your heart. And I want to say this to you. Stop resenting. Stop resenting the very opportunities that God is giving you that demands such a love to operate. Get proactive about seeking out those who need such a love. And when that love seems to disappoint and disappoint and again disappoint, then persevere. Persevere, persevere. Remember, not only will it bring transformation to your environment, but oh, it's doing something in the heavens. Uh, you, if only you could see what that does in the heavens. You are establishing your spiritual authority. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. We, we wrestle against principalities and powers. And they don't care about the title you wear. They don't care whether you can huff and puff with your Pentecostal hoot and nanny. They don't care about any of that. What they care about is are you carrying a spiritual authority that causes them to tremble? And my Bible says that's going to come out of a selfless, sacrificial love of heart. When you can persevere in love beyond all hope or all probability, you are declaring to the cosmos, I have the rulership of the Christ. The Holy Ghost in me is greater than every circumstance. The Holy Ghost in gra is greater than, within me than bitterness or hate or resentment or despair or negativity or depression. I have a power within me that can overcome all of that. It's called the love of God flowing out of me by the power of the Holy Spirit. Friends, I had three phrases to give you. One, become a life-giving well for the thirsty. Two, persevere. Persevere until you get the breakthrough. Number three, love never, ever fails. I have a few moments left. I just want to give you a story when Margaret and I first pioneered our first local church, our only local church, uh, it's about 47 years ago or something now when we did that. Uh, we're 72 now, and that was when we were 25. And uh, we thought we knew everything and knew nothing, but we're so dependent upon the Holy Ghost. And God brought a, a lady to us as a prayer support and as an intercessor, and, and she was wonderful, but she was married to this man that was an unbeliever, an alcoholic and abuser. He was a, a hard man, a very, very hard man. And uh, many people said to her on many occasions, oh, for goodness sakes, why do you not leave him? Well, you can't put up with this. The Bible allows you to, what would you, you can't keep putting up with this. And always she would look you in the eye and she says, love never fails. I will not surrender this ground to the adversary. I will prevail in sacrificial love. And month in, month out, year in, year out, year after year after year after year after year, Then one day, he cracked. He gave his heart to Jesus. We, we, we came into the fellowship. We became great friends. He got filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. He became in charge of the church's finances. I tell you what, you've never seen such a transformation. And a little while later, he, he got very sick and he went to be with the Lord. But he went to be with the Lord as a triumphant believer because of the unrelenting, prevailing love of somebody that would not quit. And that lady, now a widow, shining love to every human being that came within her radius 
And God then rewarded her some years later with another marriage to a wonderful, spirit-filled Baptist pastor. And they've had a glorious marriage together. But my father knows, you see. You see, and when she prays, let me tell you something. When she prays, all oh, heaven shifts. I tell you, Margaret and I actually know. She'd been in our intercessor now for 47 years. And when she prays, things actually happen. Why? Because she's got a spiritual authority in the heavens that cannot be debated. But how did she get it? She got it by exercising a supernatural love that was beyond all reason or logic. Boy, friends, love never fails. It'll transform your circumstance, but even if it doesn't, it does something inside of you which is gloriously eternal. Love never fails. I just want to pray for you as I close. Father, this word is going into all sorts of homes and environments right now. Father, I pray wherever this word is reaching right now in this moment, the wonderful, powerful presence of Almighty God will just fill that room, fill that, uh, uh, whether there's a room or, or wherever it is, Father, someone even listening in a car radio right now, my God, fill that environment with the power of your presence. Father, open our eyes to see the wonder of what lies within us. The miracle of all miracles that your nature by the power of the Holy Spirit is resident within us and he will flow forth out of our lives to bring transformation. I pray that you'll give hope to those that have lost hope. I pray you will revive again dreams and desires and commitments and resolve. I pray, Father, that every person, no matter how battered they have been by life, will understand right now that you've got a love for them. I've been speaking about a love that flows forth from them. But, oh, my God, I want them to know how much you love them as well, Father. Just, oh, let them, their hearts and their minds be filled with a revelation of how you love them because you do. You accept every person unconditionally and you love them without condition or reserve. Father, Father, manifest your love to everybody watching right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord bless you. It's been a great joy to be with you. I pray that a transformational river of his incredible love will flow out of you this week, every week. God bless you.